okay, if you have the PBOC stepping in, et cetera, to the broader issue of the expansion of global balance sheets. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, there's two ways to tell the story. And the first one is just with the Fed. So if you come inside the Bloomberg, and regard, for me, regardless of why this has happened here, we're over $4 trillion again, the balance sheet, just the speed at with which we re-rate it, even if it's not labeled QE, even if it's a repo issue, and overall central bank balance sheets have been expanding fairly quickly. I mean, a, when do we feel that? Like, when does it actually mean something to us? And B, like, wh what do you do with that? <laughs> well, it's QE infinity. I mean, there's a reason why they number the QEs, right? It goes one, two, three, four, five, six, and to infinity. Um, you know, I think they can't, there is no way of undoing this. This globally here to stay because of all the plumbing issues we have, because it's kind of the game, in my opinion. I mean, we're in just one giant financial experiment as we are today, post the financial crisis. You can't, it's the game of hot potato. So who wants to be the central banker who says, ah, this is just not really right. Let's scale it back. Let's create some ripples and shocks. Mm -hmm. I think the horse has left the barn. This will keep going on until, and at some point, you know, either the companies will start defaulting because, you know, they can't earn, you can give them all the liquidity, but if the market is not willing to lend and the risk premiums move up, it's game over. The market will eventually call the bluff. Don't know when that's going to happen, but when that happens, it's going to be ugly.